Instituto. Seven years. Handoff. Damian Williams trying to get to the edge. Break the tackle. 35, 30. Damian Williams, 20. Stays in bounds. 15, 10, 5. Touchdown. Kansas City. And the snap goes high over the head of Big Ben. All the way back to the 2, to the 1. And the Browns have it in the end zone. And they dive on the ball and recover it for a touchdown. Carl Joseph's got it in the end zone. A touchdown. Derek looks left. Derek going to throw for the end zone. Caught! It is caught! Touchdown! <laughs> Welcome to the rest stop. It's June 15th, 2021, Tuesday night. Brad Restituto, the rest stop. Tuesdays and Thursdays, 9 to 10 o'clock Pacific time. Spencer Ostrovsky, also known as Spencer the Wiz, joins me as always. Really big NBA show tonight as Game 5 from Barclays Center completed just a little while ago. And the winners tonight were the Brooklyn Nets, 114-108, taking a 3-2 series lead over the Milwaukee Bucks. Uh, it's now a best – it was a best of three going in tonight. And now one more win away from the Brooklyn Nets advancing to the Eastern Conference Finals. And a historic performance tonight from Kevin Durant putting the team on his back with the injuries to James Harden and Kyrie Irving. James Harden with a bad hamstring did play 46 minutes tonight, but really not too much effective on the offensive side of the ball. One of 10 from the field, three of three from the free throw line, five total points, but he did have eight assists and six rebounds, but certainly not the James Harden we're accustomed to seeing. Kevin Durant was fantastic. A big fourth quarter from him really propelled the Brooklyn Nets to the victory. 33 to 21, they outscored Milwaukee. In the fourth quarter, Milwaukee led almost wire to wire and really missed a big opportunity tonight. We'll talk about that. Giannis Antetokounmpo, the two-time MVP, is he does he have enough to get Milwaukee over the hump? I don't think so. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about Kevin Durant's performance and what the series looks like moving forward. It's certainly not a done deal yet. Just because Kevin Durant came out and had a fantastic game tonight, it's only one game. It's not the series clincher. And the healthier team, the younger team, the Milwaukee Bucks, will be at home for game six where they have not lost yet in the playoffs. So Brooklyn still has work to do. Myself and Spence talked about on the last show, Brooklyn missed a big opportunity to take a commanding 3-0 series lead, not fouling Giannis late in the game, making some faux pas, not playing their best game offensively, and letting Milwaukee take that game after they stormed back, uh, Brooklyn did in game three, down 20-plus points. Well, in this game, Brooklyn was the one down at 17 at, at one point at home, and Milwaukee let Brooklyn get back into it. So it's a tale of two series really going on here. And Spence, we talked about this on the last show, that Brooklyn had a real big opportunity to put a stranglehold on the series in game three. Injuries could happen. So much uncertainty by not giving yourself a little flexibility up 3 nothing, And that's exactly what happened later in this series. Kyrie Irving twisted an ankle and more than likely gone. For the series, James Harden not 100%. It's still no guarantee that Brooklyn closes this series out. They still got to win one. Uh, it's going to be tough to win in Milwaukee. And then they got to come back game seven. Kevin Durant played 48 minutes, did not have a break tonight. That's going to catch up to him. You can't really anticipate him coming out back-to-back -back performances on the road, scoring 49 again. He was fantastic tonight. We know he's capable of it. Some people doubted it going in tonight. Could Kevin Durant carry a team by himself with no – no big two behind him. Well, he had one of his big three, James Harden, but clearly, like we said, not himself tonight. And Durant did carry the load on his shoulders with some help from Jeff Green. Jeff Green was fantastic. Uh, I question Jeff Green's offensive capability at times. I think he's really inconsistent. He has been over the years. He was not inconsistent tonight. He was 8 of 11 from the field, uh, a blazing 7 of 8 from the three-point line and 4 of 4 from the free throw line, 27 points for Green along with three assists. A couple DNPs, uh, Luau Cabarro, DNP, uh, DeAndre Jordan hasn't played much in the playoffs. Mike James surprisingly only had three minutes, and Nick Claxton only two minutes. So Blake Griffin got a heavy dose there, a lot of small ball from the Nets, and it worked out. Kevin Durant, like I said, played every minute of this basketball game, was 13 of 16 from the free throw line. He had 17 rebounds, 10 assists, and 16 of 23 from the field, finished with 49 points. Uh, we know what Kevin Durant's capable of. He seems to be healthy, and he's got to carry this Brooklyn Nets team on his back if they're going to reach where their goals were at the beginning of the season and since they acquired Harden and had Irving on board. Their goals is to get to the finals. Uh, they're one step closer to that. 
although a lot of things have come into question in doubt throughout this series is like we talked about, Spence, a, a commanding 2 nothing series lead. You take care of home court. You have an opportunity late to close out Milwaukee in game three and take a 3 nothing series lead. Instead, Milwaukee steals that game, and then Irving gets hurt in game four. Milwaukee blows Brooklyn out. Have all the confidence. Milwaukee came into tonight's game five a three-point favorite. They led almost wire to wire and let Kevin Durant get back there late. We talked about before we came on the air, Spence Giannis Antetokounmpo, the two-time MVP, the number one guy on this Milwaukee team. Don't let Giannis Antetokounmpo's stats fool you. You can't trust this guy at this point in his career in the fourth quarter to win you basketball games. He's not a guy you trust to take a big shot. His really go-to move is to put his head down, get to the basket, utilize that, that length, and get a high percentage shot at the rim. But if you're smart like Brooklyn did a little bit tonight, put him at the free throw line. He probably had his best performance from the line the entire playoffs, and it's nothing to write home about four of seven. So a little over 50%. Giannis did hit a few, and he was two of four from three, but he did take one late in the fourth quarter that hit back iron. It was a key miss. Uh, so, you know, Giannis, the – the percentages are not in his favor, and you do not trust the guy. If 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 you're a fan, if you're a better, uh, if you're the opposing team, you see why Blake Griffin and the defenders play so far from the dare him to shoot the ball from the outside. They want that shot. Uh, if you're betting against Milwaukee or for Milwaukee, uh, you don't want him taking that shot. If you're against him, you want him taking that shot. Uh, because it's not a high percentage, and, and I don't know why they're not fouling him more. I think they could have won the game if they would have fouled him down the stretch. Uh, of course, you can only intentionally foul up till two minutes, uh, till the two minute mark. But I, I thought there was an opportunity earlier in the series to do that. I think it's something they should utilize moving forward, especially since these games look to be a little closer uh, with the injury situation. I mean, we'll see what happens in Milwaukee. Milwaukee did win the last home game pretty convincingly. Durant. A lot of pressure, a lot of pressure for him. He came out big tonight, but it's really tough, no matter who you are, to have back-to-back -back dominating performances like that. Of course, without the assistance of Jeff Green tonight, none of this is possible as Green was 7 of 8 from the three-point line. So nobody else has really stepped up besides those guys. So it's going to be tough. I, I think Milwaukee has a real shot to win at home. And then game seven, we'll see what the health looks like of James Harden moving forward. I can't imagine that hamstring is going to heal up very quickly and playing all these minutes and asking so much of Kevin Durant. Uh, it's really going to be tough. And, and you're going to, I think you're going to get better performances uh, from the others for, around Giannis. Not a great night for PJ Tucker. He didn't have any points tonight. He had a couple threes back in the home stand that were really important for Milwaukee. Chris Middleton, again, struggling from the field, eight of 22 tonight, three of 10 from three. So not too much uh, big contribution from Middleton, ineffective for the most part. Brooke, Lo Brooke Lopez, who to me, uh, I know statistically hasn't stood out, but he's been great on the road tonight. He had 15 points, six of 10 from the field, three of five from three in 36 minutes. He also added six rebounds. Uh, Drew Holiday was okay from the field, seven of 16, three of seven from three. He had 19 points. Uh, Pat Connaughton played 32 minutes off the bench. He had 10 points. A lot of DNPs for Milwaukee as well. Bobby Portis, Jeff Teague, DNPs for Milwaukee. So Budenholzer uh, playing a little different tonight. But, look, they're going to have to put all their cards on the table in game six. One more loss. Their season's over. And Budenholzer's uh, tenure as head coach for Milwaukee will probably be over as well if they get knocked out uh, in this series because every all the momentum coming into this game five was on Milwaukee's side. They'd won two in a row. The injury situation to Brooklyn – uh, Milwaukee's the healthier team, as I mentioned. They're the younger team. Uh, but Giannis, the way I look at it, continues to beat you because you can't trust him late in games. Misses key free throws, dropped an easy uh, pass right through his fingers and ended up in a turnover. Missing free throws, he's not reliable. He's not a guy that has that juice where you trust him to be a killer late in the game and extend a lead. And with Chris Middleton's inconsistency, he's been the closer at times. He's been the guy to extend those leads. Well, he's not played very well and not shot it well in this series. So it's been really tough. And they're going to need – they are going to need guys to rally around Giannis Spence uh, if they want to get back in the series. I, I think that they still have the momentum with all these injuries. Kevin Durant had to have a historic performance to finally get them ahead mid in the fourth quarter. That's a lot of carrying a team on your back, along with Jeff Green going seven of eight from three. You can't expect that to happen again, Spence. So I think this series is still very alive, but a really big win tonight 
which in my opinion should have been the closeout game if they would have done what they should have done in game three. Now, uh, of course, it looks a lot more viable for Brooklyn to win one more, but by no means is the door shut on Milwaukee and this series is over. This is just one game. It was a fantastic game by Kevin Durant, but it's not a series clincher. They still have work to do and it's not going to be as easy as some people think. Uh, there, there's a lot of this moments that I look to. Uh, I do think Milwaukee's done, like, for sure. And I'll go back, and I'm just thinking, right, the one big play, that the first one I think of is Giannis and James Harden. He's got his back to him. It's a really clutch time. They need a basket from him. It's the perfect matchup. Giannis and Harden. Harden's a horrible defender. You have him in the paint. Plenty of time left on the shot clock. He backs him down and takes a fadeaway baseline jumper that of course he misses i've never seen him take that shot in my life i wish i had the patrick uh ewing clip from when he uh, coached in college do you take that shot do you practice that shot uh i don't think he does and i've never seen him actually make it either so and then also you know the missed pass we talked about that too and then they had two missed free throws right in clutch time when you need it you could say oh it's pretty good to get one out of him but that's not what you when you have superstars, you need to make both of them. KD missed one at the end, but, you know, he's a lights-out free-throw shooter. That's like a baseline for any superstar. LeBron's a little bit of a exception to that rule, but LeBron normally makes his free-throws when they matter the most. There's a couple of times I can think about in his career where he kind of missed one. In the finals against Cleveland, I know he missed one of those clutch ones. And in the regular season, that might be kind of the narrative, but in, in the playoffs when it really matters, he makes them. And Giannis needs to get that in his mind, too. The real reason why I think they're done, and it's the key here, post-game, right? Uh, Giannis, first of all, is a defensive player of the year. Uh, so what does he say after the game? Oh, KD is the best player in the world right now. Come on, dude. It's a th it's only 3-2. I mean, you can't be saying stuff like that when your team needs you so much. That's such a, a sign of weakness. Before the season started, he also said that about LeBron, that he's better, or essentially the best player in the world. By saying someone is the best player in the world, that means that they're better than you, like just by obvious, like, you know, the way he says it. So when your best player needs to have a killer mentality. And when you don't, I don't understand how the rest of your team's going to rally behind you. I mean, and especially the way he played late in that game, when you look at it in the box score, it looks like he had a great game, but he's a real reason they lost. I mean, KD did play amazing. And I have one of his crazy shots that we can show in a second, but even Besides that, they had so many opportunities late in that game, and he was a big reason why they lost. Yes, yeah, Spence, I hate to, to really put it all on Giannis and knock him so hard. And Dave, it's great to have you back from Facebook jail. Thank you for staying up a little late and joining us in the chat. It's great to have you back. Um, yeah, I, I think Giannis is, is very overrated, and I'm not just trying to make this a hot take. I mean, there's just a, a different echelon and caliber of player on the championship level where Giannis just isn't there yet. I, I mean, Giannis, in my opinion, is not developed uh, enough footwork. He really has a couple go-to moves, and they're not good enough to carry you to to the championship. And that's my opinion. And it, it's been to that point thus far. When you have a Kevin Durant that can do what he can do, LeBron's diversity, LeBron's hit big shot after big shot in, in, in over in almost two decades of his career and won titles. And, and LeBron's such an elite passer that if his game's not going offensively, he can get to the basket and make the right pass. Uh, Giannis, I haven't seen him do that consistently enough. He'll make some good passes, but he's not an elite passer by any means, Spence. Uh, he should be able to utilize that length. I'd like to see some some really great footwork down down low instead of just putting his head down when he gets his back to the basket, maybe uh, a couple shuffle moves left, right, and up and under, something to utilize that footwork. And if he can't utilize that length to score with some of the footwork down in the post, kick the ball back out, reset, move without the ball. I mean, there's just a handful of championship guys, Spence, like Steph Curry, like LeBron, uh, and, and some other guys. I mean, you look at Kawhi's diversity when, when he won the title, not only with San Antonio, but with – the Toronto Raptors as well. Giannis and Chris Middleton just aren't going to be the guys that get you to a title. I think Chris Middleton's a fine player. He's been an all-star, but man, he's just way too inconsistent in big games. And against when that, when that volume level is raised up just a bit in the playoffs, he's just not the guy. And we talked about Giannis. Giannis has got a lot of work to do in the off season. 
and, and coming into the next few years in the prime of his career. If he wants to be a championship player, he's got to work either with some different people and, and develop some different parts of his game. And if it's going to be a Ben Simmons situation where this jo- guy just can't get his free throw shooting down and just not a consistent shooter from the outside, he's got to perfect the rest of his game and utilize what works for him, which is his great length and athleticism. And at this point in his career, he's got to do that. And we talked also, Spence, why is this guy not – guarding Kevin Durant. This is an all NBA player. He's got the size to match up perfectly with Kevin Durant in clutch situation. Does he not have the footwork to stay with him with KD off the dribble, but the length and the size should match up perfect perfectly with Kevin Durant. And I never see him on there. And I don't know why we don't have the answer to that question, but they're not going to advance in this series if they don't figure out a way uh, to limit some of these guys, I do think I, I, my gut's telling me that this is just a really uh, valiant effort by Brooklyn, a really important comeback win. We saw the emotion from head coach Steve Nash. Kevin Durant played out of his mind. I just don't see him backing that up two games in a row with all of the weight on his shoulders, go back-to-back 50 per- performances and get 20-something from Jeff Green, 7 of 8 from 3. I don't think that's possible, and I think you get a better performance from some of the other guys in Milwaukee at home, and I think Milwaukee sends it to a Game 7, and we don't know what will happen there. We don't know the injury situation with Harden. I don't think Irving will play the rest of this series. And how will Kevin Durant feel playing all of these minutes? Look, he didn't play back-to-back, Spence, in the regular season because they wanted to keep this guy on minutes restriction. He did have some injuries. Will this catch up to him in game six or seven? That's yet to be determined. He's certainly proven to hit up to this point that this guy is still in the conversation uh, as one of the best players on the planet. Giannis said it after the postgame. But they have not won anything yet except a game five, Spence. So, uh, I want to see Brooklyn back this up one more time, give themselves some rest going into the Eastern Conference Finals. Um, fantastic performance, like we said, b- with Jeff Green, with Kevin Durant, and, and an underwhelming performance in clutch time for Milwaukee and Giannis Antetokounmpo. So uh, Dave thinks that the series is over. I thought the series was over at 2, two nothing, but I thought – Game three was really important. And on the rant I went on last week, I mentioned uh, the importance of them blowing that game and if injuries happen. And my opinion, of course, was was blown up with that Irving injury and everything was different. It became a three-game series. Game one of that three-game series went to Brooklyn, uh, but the door is not shut completely yet with the injury situation going on uh, with Brooklyn. So what are your thoughts going into game six, Spence? Well, uh, Giannis also said after the game that he'd love the opportunity or something along the lines he'd love to guard Kevin Durant, which just makes no sense to me. He just has no presence. Like, he doesn't command himself for some reason, where any great player, LeBron, even Kevin Durant, I would say Michael Jordan, of course, like, there's no way they're not guarding the best player on the last possession of the game. And even if Budenholzer said, no, you can't, I mean, he would do it anyways because there's nothing he can do about it. And that's the kind of mentality that Giannis needs to make. It's interesting because, I mean, he's a foreign player, and I feel like we kind of project, like, American ideology onto him where you kind of, like, have to be the best or it's, like, this ultimate competitive nature. But I do think there is something to the way that we kind of think about sports and the way they should be played. You should have the mentality of, I am the greatest in the world, even if you're not. And until he learns that, I I think that's, like, maybe 20% of the reason they lose or maybe even more uh, because uh, Kevin Durant was able to play this way, in my opinion, because he believed that he could. I think Giannis also has the skill to a certain extent, maybe not the shooting ability, but it went to his head at the end of the game, and he's just so dismissive, and it's just not good for the team when they need him so badly. They may play well in Milwaukee, but I think they have zero chance, especially as James Harden you know, can only get healthier, seeing that he played the entire game. It seems like he'll be okay. I doubt he'll immediately go back to being out they can't they can't beat him they just i don't know what it is for this team well spence maybe they wise up and attack harden on the defensive side of the ball take him down in the post make him work hard and just until the wheels fall off like look you're in a win or go home situation now it's all your cards have to be left on the table so and boon Boone jobs at stake if he doesn't find a way to get out of this series he's done completely 100 percent done as the head coach of the milwaukee bucks and If I'm the front office of Milwaukee, I'm seriously considering what to do with this organization from a player personnel standpoint. By no means do I think uh, they have any intention of moving on from Giannis, but you've got to sit down and have some kind of conversation with some of these guys. And and with him, 
uh, in, in not so many certain terms. You don't sit there and maybe critique him to his face, but you certainly find a way uh, to challenge him this offseason in a way that has him coming back into the 2021-2022 season like we've never seen him before. Uh, because this window is not going to be open for him in the Eastern Conference to compete for Eastern Conference titles forever, if ever. Uh, this is a Spence. You're not going to have a better situation than having Irving go down for the series, Harden not at 100, percent and you have your team healthy. This is your opportunity with Drew Holiday in the mix, uh, with some other guys. Yeah, you're missing Dante Divincenzo, but there's no reason that you, you have an even series at two to two. You're down to a three game series, and having all the confidence in the world, but they blew this game in the fourth quarter, and they're going to have to bounce back quick. So everybody's job should be at stake people should be playing for their jobs for the last names on their jersey and they should come out uh they need to put this behind them very quickly and come out on fire in game six i think they will i think they have to spence if not these guys need to look in the mirror and, and figure it out uh because if they can't win game six spence if i'm the front office i'm like okay any anything's a possibility I'll offer me what you will because i have no belief that the Milwaukee Bucks are coming out of the Eastern Conference currently as they sit. Yes, do I think the, the ceiling for Giannis is still super high? Can he improve that free throw shooting and get to a 70% free throw shooter? I don't see why he can't. There's nothing wrong with his form. Uh, if he's a better decision maker, working on that footwork, the guy's a uh, former MVP. But as we currently sit, Spence, this is not a championship club. Uh, they will have an opportunity still, but they've got to win game six. So I'm very excited to see how this shows up. I want to see what the Vegas betting line looks like. And Kevin Durant's going to be asked to do it again. He's going to have to come back to back and really put the team on his shoulders. And he was only able to do that and get over the hump in the fourth quarter. Will they have that energy uh, throughout the whole game on the road in game six? And if they don't, Spence, you're asking Durant to come back in a game seven, probably playing back to back. Uh, 40 plus minute games unless Brooklyn is uh, way behind and they get sat early but you're going to be asking in a three game set a lot from your superstar Kevin Durant and a guy coming back from an Achilles injury that's something I think needs to be taken in consideration when you're saying who's going to win this series is it 100% over uh, you and Dave seem to think the door is closed I think the window is still uh, quite a bit open. I think this was a huge opportunity for Milwaukee that they did not take advantage of, but by no means with the situation, the injury situation to Brooklyn, do I think this is over? I think you've got to play Mike James more than three minutes. You've got to find a way to get some of these DNPs in the lineup. These are guys that can help you win basketball games and have experience. So we'll see what happens. Again, historic night for Kevin Durant, 49 points for him. Uh, he, he shot, I believe he was 13 to 16 from the free throw line. So really important buckets down the stretch and a huge three late in that game and propelled the Brooklyn Nets to the game five victory. Spence, let's talk about some of the other games over the weekend and on Monday. Last night had the Atlanta Hawks even up the series with the Philadelphia 76ers in the Eastern Conference semifinals. That game took place in Atlanta and the Hawks won 103-100. Trey Young had 25 points. Uh, he also had 18 assists, uh, plus seven in the plus minus. Really nice performance from Trey Young. Kevin Herter's been important. Nobody really shot the ball great from Atlanta, but they had they, they made uh, quite the comeback in that game. They were down in that first half big. Uh, they were down 15 plus points, but a really big second half from Atlanta got them the 103-100 victory. Looks like Philadelphia is a better team, but I'm not ready to trust them completely yet. I think Seth Curry has really been the guy that's got them over the top. He was great again last night, 7 of 10 from the field, 3 of 6 from 3. He had 17 points, and he's going to be a guy that's going to hit big shots uh, when you can't necessarily rely on Ben Simmons offensively. And Joel Embiid was only 4 of 20 from the field. He was one of four from three, 17 points. Again, he was money from the charity stripe, eight of eight. Uh, but he at times was grabbing that knee. We don't know what his, how healthy he's going to be going into uh, game five in Philadelphia. And I think Atlanta has an opportunity to get back and, and take command of this series. They're going to have to have their shooter shoot better than they did in game, in game four, but they did get the victory. Spence, what did you notice from Embiid? He didn't look like he was getting better with that knee as opposed to look like he was holding it at times. Uh, this could be really important when you're talking about a game five and in their home court. You're going to need some big performances from Tobias Harris, from Seth Curry in order to take game five. Yeah, there's a few things, and I think the way that Embiid played really 
emulated to the entire team, which was a major lack of focus for me. I mean, to come out the way they did, they took control of the game. I mean, it was theirs, and to give it up like that was just not good. Embiid was complaining about way too many foul calls. He just wasn't in the game mentally, and that was their problem in game one. They just were so lackadaisical, and they let Atlanta just come in and take the game from them when they should, in reality, have swept this series. Look, Trey Young's been really good, and he had a great, great game four, but again, this is an inexperienced team that is not really going to go anywhere in the playoffs, nor should they. I mean, they're overachieving as of right now, in my opinion, so this is supposed to be Philadelphia's run at the playoffs. I mean, Joel Embiid, if they do match up with Brooklyn in the next round, he's going to have an insane matchup. If they try to put Blake Griffin on him, they're not going to, and they're not going to get the kind of performance that Giannis is getting. I mean, he will destroy them. But I just I'm losing confidence in them in every day because I don't know where they're at mentally. I don't know what the problem is, and I think it may be Embiid just kind of going out there like a celebrity versus an all-time great. Again, the mentality of the best players in the league of like Kawhi, KD, and LeBron. That's why they win so much, not because they're the best players in the world, but because they have that leadership that goes with it. Spence, the line currently sits for game five in Philadelphia. The Sixers are a six-point favorite at home. Who would you take in the spread in that matchup? Yeah, I'll take Philadelphia, and I think they will win. They should have won by that many in the last game, too. And I think it'd be like, okay, now it's time to play seriously. They may mess around in the next game, too, although I really doubt it. I'm sure they'll win the next two games. But, again, in the back of my mind, I'll be thinking about those two games they should have never lost. This is going to be interesting, Spence. I really thought that Atlanta would, would have been played better in the first few games after they took game one. I don't know if they win tomorrow night, but I do think they take this to a game seven. I like this Hawks team. I know you're not as high as them on them as I am. I, I think that they should win this series, but they're not playing well enough to win it. So I don't know if they will win game five. If they do, then I think they win this series. If not, I think that they lose in seven. They'll take game six. But these guys can shoot the basketball. We know what they're capable of doing. It was a really important win. Clint Capella had 12 big points. He had 13 rebounds. Uh, Gallinari uh, needs to be a little more of a contributor. Lou Williams had some pop points off the bench, nine. Uh, but I think this Hawks team is really deep and really talented. They put Kevin Herter in the starting lineup. He's played admirably. He didn't play great in game four. They're going to need better shooting from Bogdanovich, from Young, uh, from Collins. It hurts not having Hunter in there. But I think I think Atlanta can beat this Philly team who's not 100%. And beat is not 100%. And if he shoots anywhere like he did four from 20, if you can just kind of minimize Tobias, I just, I know Tobias Harris has played really well in these playoffs. I just don't think he's as good as he's playing. I think he's a guy that can be limited and he can be shut down. I don't think he's clutch. I don't like we talk about that juice. I don't think he has that. Uh, Seth Curry, like I said, in my opinion, is the X factor. This guy continues to go off for 15 plus points. He's a really important piece. Uh, Frank Korkmaz had 10, uh, some really big, big buckets for some guys. Thibault played some big minutes. So they've got some depth too in Philadelphia. I do think Atlanta's a little more talented from top to bottom, but it's not, it's not playing out that way. And Atlanta has to get another road victory if they want to win this series. It's the best of three now. Two, two of those will be in Philadelphia. So it's going to be a really, really important game five here coming up. We'll see how Embiid bounces back from this 4 of 20 performance. Like I said, a few moments in that game holding the knee. We don't know how healthy he's going to be coming into this game. I'm sure he will play. How effective he'll be is yet to be determined. Something, again, you may have to go at uh, defensively. Uh, if that means getting the lob game going, with Capella or continuing to attack Embiid and trying to get him in foul trouble, you've got to try to expose that. And it's a really important game five for the Hawks and, of course, for the Sixers as well, the number one overall seed in the Eastern Conference. Spence, the second part of last night's uh, doubleheader, had the Clippers even up the series with the Utah Jazz, two games apiece. Donovan Mitchell did have 37 but was coming off a little bit of an ankle injury. Paul George had a really nice performance, 31 points, nine rebounds, a late run by the Jazz, but it was not enough as they outscored the Clippers in the fourth quarter, 31-24. The Clippers, though, hung on and won 118-104. They really got an overall performance from George last night. He was really effective offensively. They really led from start to finish in that matchup. Kawhi had 31, 9 of 19 from the field, 10 of 13 from the free throw line. Uh, Marcus Moore Sr. had 22 in the first half, a fantastic first half. Uh, he was kind of quiet in the second half, but a really big performance by him. 
Uh, Zubats had a key tip in late in the fourth quarter. He had eight points. He came off the bench. Uh, Luke Kennard had 12 minutes, and he had eight points off the bench. Uh, but a nice performance by some the big three last night was George Leonard and M Marcus Morris. Marcus Morris, again, 22 first half points was fantastic for the Clippers and helped, helped them hold on to the victory last night. Of course, Donovan Mitchell uh, played 40 minutes, had 37 points. Uh, he was excellent. Joe Ingles was 7-9 from the field. He had 19 points. Uh, the guy that struggled last night was Jordan Clarkson, a, a guy that you're going to get more out of. He was 3-12 from the field, 2-8 of eight from 3, only 8 points in 30 minutes. I, I don't expect Jordan Clarkson to have uh, a shooting night like that again. This, this guy's an elite scorer. And uh, this is gonna this is gonna be a great series going down to the wire again. Another best of three as we've got another series tied at two, but this one will be back in Utah for Game Five. Spence, what were your thoughts of the Clippers' victory last night? And we talked about the Clippers uh, when they were down two nothing to Dallas. Uh, you were talking fifteen to one odds on them to win the title. Well, they're right in the thick of things here with Utah. Yeah. So the first thing is is that Utah just needs a lot more out of Donovan Mitchell. I know he scored thirty seven, but he shot nine of twenty six to get there. Uh, that's just not acceptable in a playoff game, especially when they depend on him so much. Jordan Clarkson, like you said, also just not much of a factor. Uh, although he kind of, I think, understood the, the context of his game, shooting 3 of 12, so he wasn't overly aggressive. We know he can rack up some field goal attempts. Overall, just not where they need to be mentally. I, I don't know what it is. I think uh, at home they're obviously dominant in a way. So, I mean, the reality of the situation and all the way through the finals, too, if they take care of home – then they're fine. They don't have to worry about away games. But you need a win, I would imagine, at least some away games in the playoffs. I'm not sure any team's gone undefeated at home in the playoffs and still won an NBA title. Like, it's just uh, a team's eventually going to get you there. Uh, I think they'll be fine in game five. Uh, I think maybe they've lost a little bit of focus. They're playing a little too loose. Uh, but, I mean, the, the Paul George obviously has been really the savior for the Clippers. This is a guy when he scores, you know, a certain amount of points, his team's really great. When he shoots above a certain shooting percentage, his team wins like 63% of the times in the playoffs. I think I found a stat like that, uh, or I hand counted it, I should say. So uh, I'm, it all depends on him, and he's been amazing. But now, like, once the pressure comes on him again, we'll have to see if he can pick up his play, right? When there's nothing really to lose, especially when you're down 0-2, uh, I mean, what are you going to do? I mean, it's just no one really cares if you play well or not, because if you go down 0-3, then you're done. But uh, he played well, and then he played well again. So technically a pressure situation, you don't want to go down 3-1. But this is it. If he could play well here, he may end up, you know, kind of changing the narrative around playoff P. If he has another stinker, then it's just going to get 10 times worse when it says, okay, when they need you the most, you're not actually there. Uh, and then Kawhi, I mean, this is another guy where it's so hard to get a you know, where he technically at times looks like the best player in the world, hands down. He still looks like he can be the best defensive player in the world. He had a nasty block in that game, a crazy dunk. Actually, I'll show the dunk right now. This, every, we know that he can do this at any time. Like, look, take this look at this. This is insane. Seven to shoot. Kawhi makes his move. Oh, wow. A major Kawhi lights. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Put a frame on that poster. Play that one more time, Spence. That was good. Seven to shoot. Kawhi makes his move. Oh, wow. A major Kawhi light. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Put a frame on that poster. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I think that was Kevin Harlan on the call from TND. I think it sounded like Kevin Harlan and Jim Jackson. Not 100% sure on that, but uh, great call there by Kevin Harlan with the Kawhi light. Man, fantastic. Finished by Leonard there. You mentioned a block he had in that game on Derek Favors. Uh, an enormous play. And you talked about it, Spence. This guy at times looks like the best player on the planet. He's a champion multi with multiple teams, multi-time champion, finals MVP. We know he's got it in his tool bag uh, to take over games like this. And we talk about the juice. He's quiet. He doesn't talk a lot. But he certainly at times can take over games offensively and defensively and has that killer instinct in him. You can just see it by his body language and the way he plays that he has what it takes and he's proven it by being a champion. So um, we'll see if he can carry this team and have the others follow like Paul George, Reggie Jackson, Luke Kennard, Zubox had some big plays, Marcus Morris Sr. 
Uh, so it's going to be a really interesting series. It's going to be an important game five in Utah. Rudy Gobert was four or four from the field, but did not have a field goal attempt till the fourth quarter. Uh, he's got to be a little bit more active offensively. You've got to use him better in the pick and roll game. Uh, Rudy Gobert is, is decent from the free throw line, but there's no reason he he shouldn't have a few in the point paints, at least eight to ten. The guy should be averaging between 13 and 15 or more in the series, and not to have a field goal attempt till the fourth quarter is not going to cut it. But back in Utah, uh, the Jazz will be better. Uh, but this is going to be another long series, and, and congrats to the Clippers uh, for fighting back down two nothing. Uh, to the Dallas Mavericks, down 2 nothing in this series. And now we have uh, a tie series. And you mentioned Leonard, Paul George, Ty Lu is uh, making some of the right substitutions. They're getting some key contributions from some of the other guys but besides George and Leonard. And that's going to – they're going to need that in these next three games if they want to have an opportunity to, to knock off the Utah Jazz. Uh, yeah, no doubt. Uh, I think they will come out really strong in this next game. But they – more than anything, I think, to win this series – they need Mike Conley so bad because they just seem to I, – well, first of all, Conley, since you know I'm from Memphis, Tennessee, so I've seen it this entire my, – almost my entire life or since I've been watching basketball. I should say it's probably a better uh, way of saying that. Like he just understands the pace of the game and he understands the energy of it as well. Like he'll physically slow the game down to a certain extent. Even when they need it – Even you know, they're a fast-paced team, but there are moments when the like you could feel the crowd coming down on you. He's able to block that out. And I think when they're led by Donovan Mitchell, it's always go, go, go for him. And that's really where they got the problem. He had five turnovers in that game, too, besides shooting 9 of 26. Uh, we'll, we'll see. I mean, the Clippers would be the first team in NBA history uh, to win series down with 0-2 deficits in the same you know postseason. Uh, so it seems unlikely, but now it seems like more than likely since the series is tied 2-2. Very unlikely. It's impossible to bet the Clippers, it feels like. Uh, so I would stay away. But I'll be watching closely. I mean, so many legacies, I feel like, are on the line in this postseason. Spence, in Utah tomorrow, it looks like the Jazz will be a two-and-a-half-point favorite. You're staying away from that one? Over under yeah. uh, 222. It feels like the Jazz should blow them out, but then the Clippers will win a game, or maybe they'll lose by 20 points to the Clippers. Everyone will say, oh, they're they're done for, and then they'll win by 20. You should look at the, uh, the ups and downs of the series. It is just so wavy. It's very unreal to see what the Clippers have done. It's They're a mystery to me. Spence, when we started these conference semifinals, we had eight teams. We're now down to seven as on Sunday. The Phoenix Suns, they swept the Denver Nuggets with a 125-118 win on Denver's home court in game four. Chris Paul, a fantastic performers, 37.7 assists, three rebounds, and now the Suns get to rest a little bit, awaiting the winner of the Jazz L.A. Clippers series. And look, we've talked about this Phoenix Suns team. they really impressive. I don't care who it is. I don't care how banged up they are. They swept the Denver Nuggets, and that's very, very impressive as they've already rolled through the L.A. Lakers, and now they've got time to sit and observe and rest, get these guys healthy like Chris Paul, some of the young guys, Bridges, Booker, who's been fantastic. A really nice game, a really good effort by the Nuggets in the fourth quarter. Jokic was ejected in the second half of that game uh, after uh, what was called a flagrant two as he was pretty frustrated attempting to steal the ball, winding up uh, and hitting uh, one of the Phoenix players. I, I, I think it was um, Cam – was it Cam Johnson, Spence, that he hit on that play? It was uh, uh, the guards he hit. Oh, Cameron Payne? Are you talking about? Cameron Payne. He, uh, Jokic wound up and, and hit Payne, uh, hit the ball, but hit Payne in the eye as well and was ejected from that game. And the Nuggets made a nice run, but it was not enough as Phoenix – ended up winning the game and closing out the series. Spence, it's going to be much needed rest for the Suns. It's got to be a really good position for a young basketball team, a confident basketball team. Monty Williams, the head coach, uh, they want to see these Utah team and the Clippers battle it out. Uh, they'd love to see them continue to get each other banged up. I mean, you'd be nice to see one of these guys come in the series. Kawhi was kind of favoring his knee at the end of this game. This is all good signs for the Phoenix Suns. You're going to have a banged up team regardless that either plays a six or seven game series uh, coming to play a fresh Phoenix team. And Phoenix dominated Utah in the regular season series. Uh, not as successful against the LA Clippers, but like I said, Kawhi was holding that knee in that game. He hasn't been completely healthy for quite a long time. Not saying that that's going to make a huge difference if he's out on the floor. Uh, but certainly this Phoenix team 
is feeling very confident that they can represent the Western Conference in the finals as they've got one more series left, four wins away from being in the finals. Yeah, Bernie Frado said it really well. And this uh, Phoenix team reminds him a lot of that Pistons team that won, I think, in 2004, if I'm not mistaken, the Chauncey Billups, the uh, Wallace team. And I can't help but agree. I mean, is there any reason why they really should be third favorites in the title odds? I mean, they've dominated everybody who they've yeah. played so far, and they don't look like they have a lot of holes on their team. They got a great bench. Chris Paul is playing the best of his entire career. Had an injury scare like he like he normally is out for the playoffs after having his initial injury, but it seems like he's physically just willing himself past that point where he refuses to be so injured where he can't play in the playoffs. Uh, so they're playing really tough, and I think they're rallying behind him. Another guy like Mike Conley who just understands the energy and the pace of the game, and he also physically is able to pace himself in that when they need him in the fourth quarter to score, he's got it. So they weaken him down the entire game with passing, and they just can't stop him that way. So when all of the – like they don't know who to guard here at the end of the game, he just pulls up from like eight feet, and he never misses. For some reason, it's just like a layup for him. It's incredible what he's been able to do. Uh, so and, and Devin Booker, of course, has just stepped up to the plate as well. It's like he's been waiting his entire life for this moment. Uh, I love them. I, I don't really see a reason, feel, you know, seeing how inconsistent the Clippers are, and obviously now the Utah Jazz, how inconsistent they are. You're not seeing that out of the Phoenix Suns. Not that they'll sweep the team, but, man, they don't look like they're going to lose, at least in the West. Spence, there's going to be something to be said about going seven games, two series in a row, and two knockdown dragout series if the Clippers do advance. Uh, more than likely, it'll be in seven. We don't know that for sure. It's just speculation. But coming in to that series after two seven-game battle-tested series against a fresh Phoenix confident team who's rolled through the playoffs at this point, I'm going to give the edge to Phoenix. I've told you for months and months how high I am on them. Uh, I, I haven't always been the biggest Chris Paul support, but he has made an absolute believer out of me in these playoffs. Devin Booker, uh, the combination of these two is just outstanding. They they are a force. Um, can Chris Paul keep it up? This rest is going to be so huge for him, in my opinion, Spence. It really is. Uh, and you saw how fired he, up he was after that sweep. This guy sees uh, the NBA Finals in front of him. His first appearance it would be ever in history. He wants this badly. He's going to elevate the play of his team around him. Monty Williams, the right coach at the right time. He's coached Paul earlier in his career, but they're meeting up at the at the absolute right time in their careers to be on the same side. And I just think this could be the sun's year. Uh, shout out to Jose Volante on the chat here. He is a host of Straight Bet Sports Wednesday nights on Gorilla Cross Radio. I know him. He's been on Twitter, and he's a very big Chris Paul supporter. Thinks he should have been – uh, maybe the front runner for the NBA MVP, even though that wasn't in the cards for Chris Paul this year, he could very well be end up the finals MVP or the playoff MVP. If the Phoenix Suns continue to roll in the fashion they have at this point. And, and I know I've, I sound like a broken record Spence, but this rest I think is going to benefit the Phoenix Suns. And I think they're going to come out. Uh, they're going to get it. If they get ahead in that series, in their series, two games, nothing. We saw what they did to Denver. I know Denver is without Jamal Murray, but it's not easy to go into Denver and win a basketball game. And they swept them in the semifinals of the Western Conference. And to me, that is very, very impressive. They've got tons of talent. They can score from anywhere on the floor. Uh, other teams are limited. We've talked about free throw shooting, Spence. This team is, is upwards of 85% plus. Uh, in the playoffs from the free throw line. They, they're consistently shooting 85 to 90 plus percent from the line in their playoff games. That is a recipe for winning basketball. Chris Paul's turnover to assist ratio has been off the charts. He's been outstanding. I just think all the cards are falling into place. You mentioned Phoenix being the, the third betting favorite to win the title. That could be some value there as this team, uh, in my opinion, has a real shot not to only get to the finals but win the whole thing. As all these other teams are getting banged up, playing these hard series, they have question marks from an injury perspective. Uh, wouldn't you say quite possibly that your confidence, my confidence, uh, leans more so of any team left in this dance, the Phoenix Suns? Yeah, it's, with, with Milwaukee just kind of bowing out the way that they are, I thought they would be able to go to the finals and – like the way that they should play and the way that they had played in the regular season, it feels like they would have a good matchup again against uh, the Phoenix Suns. I just feel like Giannis is an absolute mismatch for them. 
Uh, but, you know, I'm out. I'm out on them completely. And if you look at Brooklyn, a fully healthy Brooklyn team would, I think, stomp Phoenix, like, really badly. But that's not the case. You can say whatever you want. Like, oh, if they did have everybody. But this, it feels like that's not going to happen for one reason or another. Right. Whether it means James Harden's going to get injured again or Kyrie, who knows when he's going to come back. They just say he's not going to be back for this series. And when he does come back, there's a whole bunch of possibilities. You can't say anything like that for the Phoenix Suns who are going to have a really long rest here. And, uh, yeah, so if, if they play just a James Harden and Kevin Durant-led Brooklyn Nets, if that's how if that's who makes it to the finals, man, I would love Phoenix in that series because I feel like where uh, Budenholzer uh, for the uh, Milwaukee Bucks is not taking advantage of a horrible James Harden hobbling around, you better believe that Chris Paul and the gang would destroy him in every conceivable way. And uh, besides the fact that Brooklyn doesn't have a good defense anyways, uh, so – but I mean, if Kyrie and James Harden are back, they'll crucify uh, Chris Paul on defense. He would get, it would be really bad for them. That's Spencer Ostrowski. Follow him on Twitter at Spencer the Wiz. The rest stop every Tuesday and Thursday, as you see here, nine to ten Pacific time. Make sure you like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. You can find that at Brad the Believer. If you missed any part of the podcast live, make sure you check out the podcast version of the show. You can see that or listen to that on any of the podcasting platforms. Just check out Landry Football Conference Call, and the rest stop will be underneath there and if you want to follow us live give us give us some support on twitch.tv slash chris landry football as we also broadcast there as well as twitter at brad the believer and then my facebook live also spence let's keep it in the nba let's talk about the all nba selections and if we have any gripes or and some monetary uh, feedback of some guys losing out on some big money by not being named to one of the three uh, all NBA teams. Let's start off with the first. As this was announced today. All NBA first team. You have Giannis from Milwaukee. You have Steph Curry from the Warriors. Luca from Dallas. The MVP Nikola Jokic from Denver, and then Kawhi Leonard from the Clippers. We talked about it before we get on the air. The one guy you maybe gripe a little bit on the first team is Kawhi Leonard. Talk about that for a minute, Spence. Yeah, I had Julius Randle in my forward spot for first team All NBA. I had uh, this one's gonna be really crazy now. Uh, Westbrook, Steph Curry, Giannis Antetokounmpo, Julius Randle, and Jokic. Not too crazy of a deviation, but I don't know how they vote for All NBA. I, I would think that games played would matter to a certain extent. Kawhi did not play that many, something in the fifty game ballpark, uh, but he was on one of my All NBA teams. I, I had him at three. And LeBron, too, I had him at uh, my third-team All-NBA as well, simply because they just weren't on the court that much. And I feel like you should reserve the first team for guys that were present the entire season, and they also played the best. So a little shocking, but nonetheless, Kawhi was very, very good this season, although you could argue that Paul George was better, and they played a similar amount of games. There you have it. Uh, Second-team All-NBA, Joel Embiid, LeBron James, Damian Lillard, Chris Paul, Julius Randle. You, you mentioned Julius Randle. Chris Paul, Damian Lillard, some would argue those three guys could be on the first team, and I don't think you'd have much of an argument if they were. They were outstanding this year. Uh, LeBron and, and Embiid, guys that did not play uh, the full gamut of games this season. LeBron, I think you mentioned, spent what did he have, 50 on the lower side of 50 games? Yeah, I think it was 53, I think he played. And Embiid was great, but again, didn't play all of his games. So, uh you know, like you said, availability sometimes is the best ability to have. LeBron and Joel, of course, in the MVP conversation at the beginning, but did not finish the season uh, playing a lot of games. So when you go to the third team, you, you see Kyrie Irving, who, again, didn't play a ton of games. Rudy Gobert, the defensive player of the year. Paul George, Jimmy Butler, and Bradley Beal. Some notable names left off these lists, Spence. Jason Tatum, who was outstanding this year. Donovan Mitchell. You mentioned Russell Westbrook. These guys all have really uh, legitimate beefs of not being on one of these three all NBA teams. Yeah, it's pretty nuts. I mean, Westbrook is, is the biggest one for me. And people seem to be so dismissive about it. But, you know, when Westbrook decides to hang it up and maybe even starting next year, he's not going to average triple double. And who knows who will be the next player to average a triple double in a season? I know we live in like an inflated NBA world, but. Again, no one else has done it other than him. So clearly it's not like happening soon or you wouldn't expect. It's so difficult to do that. <laughs> I mean, if you would try to explain to someone back like 20 years ago that someone with a triple-double wouldn't make any of the all-NBA teams, <laughs> you would think they're insane. I mean, you think that's reserved for 
first team all NBA. It was for me, especially considering they made the playoffs. Okay, if they don't make the playoffs, maybe he slips away. Maybe it's third team all NBA. That one's a little bizarre to me. Um, and the fact that Luca was also so high was actually kind of surprising as well. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I think the real big story, like besides the fact that these these do matter to the players, and you know, it's always brought up in arguments about how many All NBA teams they had. But you said a little bit about Donovan Mitchell and um, Jason Tatum to quantify they're missing out on thirty million dollars on their on their extensions, which that's a lot of money. I think they care a lot more about that than their name being on the All NBA list. Well, Spence, that's that's a really big deal. And you mentioned Westbrook. Will there be another that puts up and averages a triple double the entire season? I think it's hard enough to play an entire season, much less put up those stats. Uh, Russell Westbrook, I certainly certainly think has a big gripe about not being named to any of these first, uh, second, or third All NBA teams. Really, it makes you shake your head a little bit. Certainly, the guys on these lists are top of the line, elite star NBA players, but some of them didn't play very much. Others played most of the season. Westbrook battled injury and played. Uh, if he missed any games, it was less than five. I'm pretty positive about that. Uh, Spence says, we're keeping it in the NBA. Some rumors around the league talking about the Orlando Magic and Jason Kidd. What have you heard? You do some writing for Orlando. You follow the organization fairly closely. Uh you, you have it listed right here. Would Jason Kidd be the right fit for a team that has no direction? I couldn't agree with that statement more. Uh, I've also heard talks on NBA radio on Sirius XM channel 86. Uh, Becky Hammond, assistant from the San Antonio Spurs, this could be a good fit for her as opposed to going to a team that's already established with superstars kind of in a rebuild team. Uh, I don't think Jason Kidd would be the right fit for this team. I think he's certainly in line to maybe take over for Frank Vogel if he doesn't have a great year coming up for the Lakers. I think that's what the Lakers had in mind when they brought Kidd on board to the staff there. I loved your take, Spence, on Kenny Atkinson being the Orlando Magic's fit. I think that could be a fantastic uh, match for the Magic and for that organization with the young pieces around them. I don't think Jason Kidd is the right fit for this team. You're going to have to have a lot of patience. You don't want to continue to recycle cl- coaches like this Orlando organization has done. You want to have a guy that's going to be there uh, at the helm for at least 10 years or more. I mean, I know it's very tough to do in this day and age, but you, you've got to know there's going to be some bumps in the road with this young team that it's going to be really tough to get them over the hump and it's going to take some time. I don't know that I like Jason Kidd as the fit here. What are your thoughts on this rumor and, and on the situation with Orlando and Jason Kidd? Yeah, more than anything, I'm actually surprised that Jason Kidd had interest in this job. It feels like he wants a team that's playoff ready because you, you start your career as a head coach with Milwaukee who weren't necessarily title threats like they're considered now, but they were a playoff team and they were definitely going to make the playoffs. He had a lot of respect on that team. Look, you get fired from your first job and there's already a ton of questions. I mean, people rarely get second chances. I mean, you have to be a big name to make that happen. So whatever job he takes next is going to stick with him for a very long time. If he goes to Orlando and fails, which he probably will, because Orlando is just like not primed to do anything in the next couple of years, that could be it for him. It may just be, okay, I'm going to see what they, the conversation is. But I agree. I don't think it's the best fit in the world. I don't know like how he'll even fare on a rebuilding team. But Orlando has to think really hard about this. And I think they should actually decide soon because here's the situation. They made some decent trades for sure. I like some of the talent that they got, but and they also have a very high pick, two high picks in this draft, mind you. I don't know what those are going to be yet, but both of them will be in the top 10, which is huge, right, to, for the quarter so of their franchise. But uh, Window Carter's okay. I mean, uh, I'm, I hate – I really don't like Mark Hill. State's a strong word, but uh, I don't think he's going to be in there much longer. They overpaid for him for absolutely no reason other than the fact that they're an inadequate franchise, and uh, that's just my opinion on that. So – they need a coach who knows how to deal with young talent. And that's why I love Kenny so much. Jason Kidd is more of a guy who maybe will get you over the hump because I don't know. It's just the, the current wave is former players are making great coaches. And I think that support system also helps benefit that. Because if you look at the Derek Fisher days, like that was really experimental and strange. And that was kind of Hollywood. And that's what I feel like it would kind of be for Orlando too. Much more like Derek Fisher than Steve Nash. Steve Nash was brought to the, 
uh, the Brooklyn Nets to get them over the hump, not to uh, do what Kenny Atkinson did. So that's just kind of how I feel about that. I hope they don't hire him, nor do I think Jason Kidd is actually all that interested either. That's Spencer Ostrowski. Follow him on Twitter at Spencer the Wiz. Spence, as we're wrapping up tonight's show, um, again, a great performance tonight from the Brooklyn Nets, uh, more so from Jeff Green and Kevin Durant. 49 from Durant. They take a 3-2 to two series lead in Game 6 will be in Milwaukee. Spence, if we do have some highlights from that, let's get to that before we wrap up tonight from tonight's Brooklyn-Milwaukee matchup. Yeah, I got uh, one shot here. It was from KD, basically the shot of the game. I, I couldn't believe it. I was watching it. This guy truly is special. And I think the most important thing is to appreciate it, right? Instead of talking about, uh, we I spent a lot of time talking about Giannis, which is, I think, the right thing to do. But besides all of that, man, this is going to go down as one of the all-time great performances. The crush the defense by the walking out. The land fires. <laughs> Yeah, fantastic shot from KD. But in my opinion, Spence, and the reason I'm talking about Giannis more so, because this series is not over yet. And in order for this to go down as one of the great performances, the Brooklyn Nets are going to have to win this series. And I don't know that they're healthy enough to do it. Uh, so a fantastic game five from Kevin Durant. But if they end up losing the series, this will be remembered as a great game. But it by no means will go down in the annals as, as when we talk about uh, – maybe like the Reggie Miller game in the garden where he scored all those points in a matter of 15 seconds. I think this Brooklyn team has to advance in this series for this to go down as an all-time performance. It certainly was a historic performance, uh, but it's going to be yet to be determined how historic it will be. They're going to have to close the door on Milwaukee and they're going to have to uh, do it in, in either game six or game seven. And I don't think that's a foregone conclusion at this point. Spence, as we're wrapping up tonight's show, a couple other big sporting scores and news as we still have some other sports aside from the NBA going on. We're in the middle of baseball season, so not too much to talk about there. Uh, but we do have some UEFA European Championship Cup soccer. And today had a couple games go final. Portugal, they shut out Hungary 3-0. Cristiano Ronaldo, two goals. One of them in extra time, giving Portugal the 3-0 victory. And France shuts out Germany 1-0 in that matchup. Uh, in the UEFA European Championship League. And, of course, hockey here in the Valley. The Vegas Golden Knights last night take game one in the Western Conference Finals. They took care of business, and they beat the Montreal Canadiens. Uh, the score in that matchup was 4-1, to one, 28 saves from Mark andre Fleury in net, and the Knights hold home ice advantage at the Fortress of T-Mobile Arena and take a 4-1 to one victory and lead that series one game to nothing. And in the Eastern Conference, the Tampa Bay Lightning, they get a 4-2 victory tonight over the New York Islanders. Uh, so that's the conference finals of the Stanley Cup. Uh, and actually, it, it looks like uh, the Lightning, tonight's win tied the series up at one game apiece. The Knights, they lead the series one game to nothing over the Canadians. And game two will be tomorrow night at T-Mobile Arena here in Las Vegas. So that's going to do it for tonight's show. Uh, the rest stop, make sure you check us back on Thursday night. We'll talk some NFL, some more NBA playoffs on Thursday, 9 o'clock Pacific time. For Spencer Ostrowski, I'm Brad Restituto. Have a great night, everyone. Take care.